What's up, y'all? This is Kenny Cummins here. I'm chilling with Kenny C right here on TMVCafe.com. I'm joined with one of my good friends on the local music scene. Uh, he's definitely been on the grind, um, putting out music. He's still doing music, obviously. He released his latest project this past September. It's called Ben Outside. Uh I've known this man for nearly seven or eight years now. It's definitely been a very long time. Uh, man. He, he goes by the name of Scotty Fries, and uh, he's with me right now. How's it going? Man, I am doing great. It's going well. We have been outside. Thank you for having me back on the program, Kenny. Man, I was scratching my head, and I was thinking about it. And uh, it's been probably about two years since I was on the show with you. Yeah. But when it was coming up this time, I was thinking about uh, – the holidays, and I think it's been two or three years now since you came over and you joined me for Thanksgiving. Yeah, you got come with your family. Yeah. yeah, that was 2021. Cause uh, yeah, uh, 2020, yeah, 2020. Yeah, uh, pandemic. That's, that's when everything got shut down, and yeah, I couldn't go anywhere. No, it's probably 2021 because things kind of got a little better after that. So yeah, it's two 2021 at least. Um. But yeah, man, it's, yeah, I, I was at his crib. Uh, things fell through. Um, personally, I wasn't able to go see my family around that time. And um, I was going to spend Thanksgiving on my own, which not a big deal. It's not the worst thing in the world. But then a couple of friends came up to me and said, yo, man, you ain't spending Thanksgiving on your own, man. You family. So come yep. on through. So you, I went to a friend's house in Richmond, and then I went to your crib with your family for the nightcap. So I got more than I bargained for. I had two Thanksgivings in one day. So it just shows you how much of a a good, you know, humanity in the local music scene. So yeah, shout out to the local music scene, man. And just the world at large, man, bigger than music, that's for sure. Yes, yeah, it's de it's definitely beyond the music, sure, man. So let's talk let's talk about this project, man. Like yeah. being outside. Um this is your latest release. Mm -hmm. You've been you've been doing your thing, you vibing. One thing we can always count on when it comes to Scotty Fries is that he will he will provide the vibes and you yeah. will have fun while you're enjoying the music. So talk about working on this Ben Outside album. Man, thank you for all the uh, positive descriptions and uh, encouragement. And you've always been such a big supporter of my music since, I mean, some of my first local shows when Cosmic Charlie's was still open. I think that was yeah. one of the first times we met, which is crazy yeah. to think about probably 2015 now, which is just wild. But um, man, this project is kind of a culmination of a long period of work. I um, dropped my first ever project in 2014. So next spring is going to be a 10 year anniversary of that. It's crazy to think about. And that project was titled Infamy and Empathy. But um, this one marked my fifth full length rap release and my eighth album overall. And since that first release in 2014, I had had some follow-up ones. I had an album called New America, and then I had one called Cloud Lives, and I had one called Infinity Pool. And around 2017, I started producing beats, and I took that upon myself where I was like, how can I expand my sound? Or how can I do more things kind of beyond just rapping? And um, part of that was being exposed to different shows, different genres, but this new project, Been Outside, was kind of a culmination of that, where the music that I've been recording from really kind of 2017 up until spring of this year, I had released pretty much everything except about 10 tracks. And I decided that this was a great time to kind of release those and get them out the vault. And um, at that point, you know, it was exciting because I didn't have any other music that I was sitting on in the stash. So... Now I'm at the point where I can kind of work on new stuff. And this one was a really special one because it marked my first project that I actually produced a majority of the beats on. So I made seven of the 10 beats 
And that was really inspiring to me because I had, you know, that very first project in 2014, Infamy and Empathy, it was like 12 tracks. I made none of them. The Cloud Lives album was 15 tracks and I didn't make any of those beats. So for me to get to a project where I was producing a majority of the songs and the sounds, that was really encouraging, really inspiring. And um, I think musically, it's kind of been a expansion of my sound where I've always kind of leaned towards some hip hop influence and I've always loved jazz and alternative rock and things like that. But this is probably my most melodic project to date, I'd say. And um, very kind of interesting, just balance of styles and sounds that I've done. And um, the feedback has been really, really good. And um, I'm still dressed up, kind of suited and booted right now. But since uh, we had that Thanksgiving a few years ago, I've transitioned in my full-time day job is doing real estate. But that's been fantastic. And I really enjoyed that. And I realized that the real estate would give me an ability to kind of help the community, but also have the free time to still work on my music. So that's kind of been the best of both worlds. But um, it was nice because even as I was transitioning to real estate, I still had these songs in the background that I knew I could release at some point. And um, of this project of the 10 tracks, I said I produced seven of them, but all but three of them were recorded from 2017 to 2021. And then I think the first three tracks on the album, um, or maybe track one and then, yeah, no, a couple of them. First three, I think I'd recorded um, with Phil Williams here in Lexington at the dojo. And then I recorded the outro track with him as well. So that was nice to have like kind of uh, a culmination of all, all the work and time that I put in. And that's why I picked the title, Been Outside, because we've been outside doing a lot of good stuff. Literally. He literally been outside, literally. So, <laughs> I yeah, I remember the first time we met the first Cosmic Charlies. There were three Cosmic Charlies throughout the years, and then they closed their doors, I'm thinking 2021, I believe. Um, mm -hmm. But it was, but we met at the first Cosmic Charlie's Woodland Avenue. Very Classic. small, the very small Cosmic Charlie's. Uh, that's this was the Mike Jones. Mm -hmm. show. Um, yeah. Ashton May was their knowledge, aka J Jason Shepard, performed as well. And then, of course, you did your thing. So that yeah. was my introduction to Scotty Fry. This is way before the real state. You know what I'm saying? It's, you know, and you know, you was definitely vibing that night. It was it was a good uh, set, and just seeing how far you come since then. You know, like you said on your first project, you didn't produce any of the songs, uh, and now on your latest project, seven out of ten. And I have been paying attention to the instrumentals, to some of the beats you've done um in the past year or two. Uh, yeah. And now you put it all together in a full length project, man. That's awesome stuff, man. I'm, I've definitely been digging your, your project. And with all the albums I've heard from you throughout the years, it's definitely your best body of work to date because it's definitely man. showing your versatility. It's showing like you, you're elevating musically. Like you're really showing people, hey, man. I could do more than just rap, man. I watch me lay out these beats too. So yeah. Uh, so respect to you in that regard. So, man, I'm humbled to hear you say that, and I really appreciate that. That is um some kind of similar feedback that I've gotten to friends or listeners and people who've checked out the new one, where they said, you know, from where you started to where you're at now, the progression has been really clear, and um, it's exciting. It's fun because. That very first night that we met, when I did that show opening for Mike Jones, as you know, and some people may, if they're listening or familiar with me, I was originally born in Texas and um, moved to Kentucky at a pretty young age. But being able to share a stage with a true Texas music and hip hop legend like Mike Jones was awesome. And um, it was just incredible. But I remember a conversation I shared with him that night and he was extremely humble and just very kind of poised and, you know, thoughtful. And he said, you know, you're talented. You got really good skills. I can hear your passion. 
And he said, the biggest thing is to just, you know, enjoy the ride. He said, just have fun with it. Don't think too much into it. And if you love what you're doing, then it won't really feel like work. And um, that's kind of stuff that I've always kept close to me. And, you know, as you get older, you want to expand your kind of reach and things like that. There's always more questions of promotion or syndication, things like that. But I've always kind of stayed close to that core energy of just, you know, make what you can make. And even if it's just one person enjoying it, that's uh, that's what counts. I have a friend, Jordan Pedrera. Shout out to him. But he's a good friend of, friend of mine that I met at a music festival a few years ago. And he lives in Louisiana and works as the head of a uh, fire station. But he messaged me just yesterday and was like, I was in the car and your song came up on shuffle. And I told my friend, I was like, that's Scotty. That's my guy. He's awesome. And like, even if it's just one person enjoying the track, for me, that is what it's all about. And uh, yeah, I just, I feel very blessed and thankful. And now that I've got this big back catalog of music, you know, anything else that I release that people like, they like it. They have a bunch of other stuff they can go back and listen to. Yeah, so Been Outside from Scotty Fries came out this past late summer, early fallish. Um, yeah. It's available on all the streaming platforms. By the way, the, co- the album cover, you, y- <laughs> young Scott with the red cup. So- Very young Scott. Yeah, that's, that's a great one. The thought process behind it and actually um the reason i picked the release date is that that day when it dropped september 2nd was actually my 30th birthday so um i wanted to do that's kind of a culmination i feel like age is just kind of a number you know a lot of times people associate it like you're too old you can't do music whatever else it's like it doesn't matter and um that picture of me with kind of comically large basketball shorts and very long drawstrings they're almost falling out of the photograph and a solo cup was actually taken from a uh, family trip when I was pretty young. And I was with my older brother, who's my only direct sibling, and my two cousins from Florida. My brother is Michael and my cousins, Daniel and David. And um, there's a picture of us that my grandparents got. And we kind of look like a mugshot lineup of all us staggered next to each other. And I was probably the most incriminating of all the ones <laughs> for future purposes, I guess. But um. Yeah, that was a picture I'd always wanted to use. And I was like, man, what's a more fitting, uh, you know, photo than that? And Phil Williams, 502 Phil, the engineer who helped me put that together and finish it, along with John X. Kennedy, um, and my main engineer that I worked with for a long time, John Casper, they'd all collaborated with me for a long time. And Phil suggested that title. He said, you know, that picture, man, you've been outside. And I was like, hey, I think that's it for real. Yeah, man, that that that's that's quite the photo, man. It definitely feels like a tradition that yeah. a lot of hip hop artists like to throw the younger photos of themselves, you know, the baby pictures or young kid photos. Yeah, just to, just to reminisce, just to the person that they were then, to the person that they are now. So you know, it's a nice touch. Um, yeah, and you, you definitely look like you was vibing. You was vibing then. You vibing now, man. Thirty years of young, now real estate extraordinaire. And you know, I've seen you done the real estate, and uh, you've done incredible things with that. Um, Thank you. and you, you, you know, you, you make you handling business. You are making friends. You are changing people's lives whether they already lived in Kentucky or as those that was moving to Kentucky just to just to take that step, that leap of faith. And uh I mean real estate, man, that's that's a lot of responsibility um for 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 y'all. Um, you know, you wanna make sure that this is the right decision for these um your clients, obviously. So seeing that man seeing your posts you know seeing the pictures with the big key you know just <laughs> like testament man of, of your heart your work ethic you, you always had the work ethic as far as an artist you definitely showing a hit the work ethic um with real estate work i think it's incredible so if you man. so not only he can drop bars he can he can help you get a home 
Uh, so <laughs> yeah, that's why that's why I said you know I'm a realtor and a rap rapper. So I guess that makes me a raptor. <laughs> raptor. <laughs> real estate, the real estate rapper. Um, yeah. yeah. So it, um, yeah, I, I've had people ask me, you know, are you going to do any real estate related raps or stuff like that? And maybe at a certain point, I'd do something like that. But um, yeah, it's just a blessing because still being in Kentucky and being in this area, anyone who's actually come and visited Central Kentucky will realize it's extremely beautiful. There's a lot of awesome, vibrant culture, really cool people, a lot of kind of, you know, misconceptions outside looking in where people think it's just a bunch of farms and horses and rednecks. <laughs> And, you know, there's so much more here than that. And that was something where I was really passionate about. And I said, you know, I don't want to just be a representative of the city or, you know, of the state. I lost somebody like Nemo Akita or Nemo's protege and kind of partner in crime, Jack Harlow. But I really wanted to help people in kind of a localized way and say, you know, how can I build the community up? And, you know, it's one thing to just drop a couple tracks or throw a big party but it's another thing to help people have a life-changing decision and get some professional expertise and yeah a lot of the real estate business i've done has been with military veterans and first-time home buyers and i've been very blessed i've helped people from as far away as alaska and even hawaii move out here to kentucky in the last two years and uh to have an opportunity to be able to help people and then i've had some people kind of after the fact like so you do music <laughs> They're like just a little bit <laughs> yeah man so um so if you if you need if you if you need that music he got you and who knows you can buy a house you need a house to got you too <laughs> and listen to Scotty Fry's music at the end of the day you can listen to yeah. the house that he helped you bought um <laughs> now look I live in Kentucky for most of my adult life I for a little over two decades now. And I can assure you, uh, Kentucky is more than what people say it is. Uh, it's more than bourbon on basketball and country music or whatever. We got we got a lot going on. We got some places, Lexington, Louisville. It's just, it depends on your preference. It depends like where you want to go, what you want to explore. You know, Kentucky, we're not New York, we're not Cali, we're not Florida, but, but we, we can give you a variety of the things that these larger states have. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. And speaking it's, of it's Jack Harlow, yeah. sp speaking of Jack Harlow, um, number one song in the country right now, and uh, he's going to be at what this Sunday, and I will be there. So I'm gonna be there too. I'm gonna have to <laughs> see you and say hello. Yeah, I'll, I'm gonna be in the lower level this time. So I'm nice. Gonna, so um, yeah. This he said he was gonna come to WAP, and uh, and he is. So he's a man of his word. I appreciate yeah. Jack for that. So no, I do so. too. And it's a crazy full circle moment because you know from the local music scene, Nemo Nemo Okita has been such a staple for a long time and had connections with. 88 Keys and SZA and all sorts of really industry, you know, kind of heavyweights in a lot of ways. And um, Nemo has now stepped in and is the drummer for the newly formed kind of super group or band, Black Sheep Mob. Rest in peace to local artists and young legend Mikey Trill. And Nemo kind of filled in with this amalgamation of local acts and has ended up being the drummer that kind of pulled the whole thing together. And it's so cool to see how he's helped Jack kind of find his sound and develop and put his sauce and kind of, you know, two cents towards it. And then Jack turns back around and pays it back by, you know, having him open for these stadium shows and really just getting the whole state on board. And that's something about the Kentucky culture that I think is very powerful and interesting because in some other states, not to say that Atlanta or Chicago or other music hotspots like even Houston or Memphis don't have collaboration because they definitely do. But sometimes there's kind of a dog eat dog mentality where it's like, ah, only one of us can succeed or, you know, where are we all going to eat? And I think Kentucky really turned a corner in the last five to 10 years by realizing there's enough space for all of us. And, you know, the more you support other people's artistry, the more you have that culture being built brick by brick, day by day. And, I will say personally, that's something that I'm proud to say and take credit for that I really try to inject 
that positive energy and support into the local music scene. In the last few years, I mean, the list goes on from my Between the Lines collaborator, Els Bentley, to XK Hours, to Corio, to Fred C., to, you know, Spencer Diamond, to so many people. I mean, the list goes on. Yoku Naru. I could just name artist after artist that has really been impactful. Cub Capulet. And, um, yeah, it's just – it's incredible to see that kind of culture building up where – we're having people look at what's going on in Kentucky for kind of, you know, what's next now. Yeah, we got some heavy hitters that's doing it locally. Els, Cub, uh, Fred C, Corey D, um, of course, Devon Kawama with his community work as well. Shicey, um, Christ. Shout out so, Shicey. Yeah, so Shicey, Just Me, just guys that's really putting on for Central Kentucky. So, Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's an awesome look. Um, y'all made sure y'all check out this album, Been Outside from Scotty Fry's. Um, it's available on all the streaming platforms and check them out on social media at Scotty Fry's. That's Fry's spelled F R Y S, not yes. fries like the food that you eat. French fries, yep. No, not, yeah, so F R Y S. He's on social media at all Twitter. Yes, we're still calling it Twitter, uh, Facebook, <laughs> Instagram. He's on all those platforms, so go check him out. It's great to have you on the show. You're a very busy man, a lot more busy than you were when the first time I met you. And every yeah. time we cross paths, it's, it's always love. And uh, I appreciate you, man. And, you know, keep doing your thing. And uh, who knows, maybe I'll – be one of those fortunate first time homeowners. I gotta take care of my breath first before I can talk to you and everything. Hey, we'll have a lunch <laughs> and a conversation about it. And this applies beyond just the music and the real estate, but life in general. Yeah. And I tell people this all the time. You wanna do things the right way instead of right away. Yeah. And you, you know, as long as as long as you take it step by step and you do it and you really have people that have your best interests at heart. I don't think there's anything that's off limits. And I just want to thank you for being such a pillar in our local music community, someone who's filled this content space with the digital and also kind of, you know, text media where you've really found a space to highlight local musicians, highlight all sorts of genres and artists that go beyond just the music scene and really provide people a space to share their stories and, you know, show the world what we're doing here. And, um, Man, we cannot do it without you, Kenny. So I'm humbled and grateful to be uh, a part of the program again. And, yeah, I think you could say in agreement, too, that C Broadcasting has been outside for a while. So we're doing some good stuff. Yeah, 16 years and counting, believe it or not, on the 17th hey. next year. So uh, Ain't no stop at the train now. <laughs> no. I mean, with, this, uh, with all this love and support for the local music scene, I can't stop. So I'm going to keep going for as long as I can. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, you take care, man. You have a good night. You too, Kenny. God bless you. And I hope the next interview is fantastic. Happy holidays as well. And we'll get together in person soon, okay? All right, man. You take care. All right. Take it easy. All right. Peace. All right.